Hello, I'm Andy Schaefers with Acuity. Welcome to the launch of Solid Edge ST9, the best release yet of Solid Edge from Siemens. Solid Edge ST9 is the 29th release of Solid Edge, and this year's release is all about expanding your horizons and combining the cloud capabilities and data management you need with unprecedented flexibility and excellence in 3D CAD. So let's break these areas down so that we can take a tour of what Solid Edge ST9 brings. First up, cloud-enabled design, but on your terms. Cloud means different things to different people. File storage, mobility, precipitation. It's touching all software, including CAD, and can certainly bring benefits. What Siemens is focused on is just that, the benefits it can bring. So what are these? It's CAD that follows you wherever you go. The ability to share CAD files easily across teams and sites. And CAD that's reliable even when a cloud internet connection is brought into the equation. You'll be happy to hear that ST9 delivers in all of these areas. ST9 can follow you wherever you go. Your license can now be held on the cloud if you wish, which means a simple login to start designing your your personalized settings are remembered, and any software updates can be installed from the cloud, but of course only when you choose. And designs can be accessed anywhere with support for popular cloud services. Let's talk more on this. Sharing CAD files easily across teams and sites, ST9 integrates with your favorite cloud storage service such as Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, and Box. That means, of course, that changes at one site are synchronized with others. However, Solid Edge has integration to lock files during edits to ensure proper collaboration. We'll talk about that more later on. Finally, reliability. You'll be happy to hear that even with this cloud capability, if your internet goes down, Solid Edge doesn't, and that includes access to files. And because it doesn't rely on internet speed, performance is still as fast as ever. And of course, the freedom to choose how you purchase and deploy Solid Edge remains. Your license can still be node locked or floating as an alternative to cloud based. And you can still purchase flexibly, perpetual or subscription with monthly and yearly options. It's all about your choice. And these benefits work not just for larger companies, but small companies, or even one-person companies, as you see here with uh, Ryan Sperling. So cloud-enabled Solid Edge, check. But more importantly, it's your choice. So next up is fast and flexible 3D modeling. Year-on-year, -year, Solid Edge matures in modeling capability to make you more productive, and this year is no different. Before we jump into Solid Edge SD9, I want to point out some user interface improvements that we'll see throughout the session. First of all, there's increased consistency with Microsoft Office behavior i.e. what we're familiar with in Word, Outlet, Outlook, ETC, to ensure ease of operation when switching between other desktop products. Tab documents, a much easier way of switching between and working with multiple files that we have open. There's also high resolution monitor support ensuring that we get the best visual experience when working with the latest monitors and academic themes for different age groups to assist their learning. Okay, so where should we start? Well, design often begins with an idea, right? We can best capture this idea. Okay, so where should we start? Well, Design often begins with an idea, right? But how can we best capture this idea? We'll look briefly at a new software offering from Siemens called Catchbook and how this beautifully complements Solid Edge. To save time, I'm not going to do a demo of it. 
but I will tell you I've been playing with this on my smartphone for the last couple of weeks and I'm very impressed with the application. My favorite feature is something that's not shown here in the PowerPoint image, but it's the ability to take your phone, take a picture of a product, part, or design you're working on, and then sketch right over the top of it if you have to communicate problems or changes that have to be made. What this software does is allows you to either draw with the stylus as shown in the picture or with your finger, and if you draw kind of a wobbly line, it figures it out and turns it into a straight line, a real arc for you. So even if you're just roughly sketching, your final product can be quite accurate and communicate your ideas clearly. If you haven't yet, just uh, go and download this to your tablet or smartphone and give it a try. So let's continue with the unique offering in Solid Edge, synchronous technology, of course. It's all about harnessing the speed and simplicity of direct modeling with the flexibility and control of parametric design. This technology continues to be improved. Let's take a look at what's new in ST9. Let's explore some new features in ST9 using the Zumex juicer, which is a component from one of our customers in Spain. We'll look at the uh, part here in the middle we're in place activating, and this part was created using our hybrid techniques. So synchronous features followed by ordered features, and the curved handle that you see on the top is ordered. Let's return to the synchronous, and you'll see one of the new capabilities. It's the dynamic display of the ordered feature. You see it there in uh, the lighter color. This allows you to make synchronous changes and understand immediately how that's going to impact the ordered update. So here we're rotating and you'll see that dynamic display of the handle update. Then we'll move that feature in and it will continue to update correctly. Besides being a hybrid part, this is also a multi-body part. We've made significant changes here in ST9. If you've used multi-body modeling, you know in previous versions, you must be careful when you do a cutout to make sure you've got the correct active body. Well, now we've removed that limitation, you can actually select multiple bodies to be cut with a single feature, as we've shown here. And in fact, it's actually smart enough that if you mirror that feature, the mirror will remember that two bodies were being cut and your mirror feature will reflect that. Now we're going to union the two together. And at this point we will return to the ordered side of our hybrid technique because we we need to fix that handle. This will show us the new 3D sketch point, which controls the shape of that handle. Now you can just click and you're able to, in one place, type three different coordinates, X, Y, and Z, to determine the position of that point, and you'll see the orientation of the handle update. The next feature is more of a review. The width of that curved handle is determined by a 3D sketch line, which we have had in the software. If you haven't used these 3D sketch lines or sketch points yet, please give them a try in ST9. Here we're just increasing the width of this line, and you'll see the curved handle update. Next, we're going to look at some changes we've made to the way we manage the material library in Solid Edge, but we won't do that in this part. Let's return back to the assembly and there's a component on the front of the juicer that will in place activate. Our customers would like to know if 
the materials that they have assigned are actually uh, there's a fidelity between those and the material library so here we're seeing that we are missing that the materials are out of date so we can just hit an update button and now we have uh, the updated information from the material library on the server then we've got additional sorting options available so that we can see the materials using different logics depending on uh, what kind of information we're looking for and here we'll actually change the material and apply it to the model and you see the little spheres that are now in use uh, to show us the, the colors for different rendering styles now let's move on back to modeling we're in synchronous and here we'll demonstrate our new capability to uh, have a persistent mirror in synchronous so we'll mirror this feature it we have the persistence turned on here's our reference plane okay let's check this we'll make a change to the position of one of these faces and for those of you who've used synchronous in the past you might be a little surprised at this outcome because it is honoring the thickness of that rib without any dimensions being placed there that's the result of another new capability in ST9 the offset relationship type where it is automatically seeing rib features now here we're turning off that offset filter and now it's behaving more like st8 or previous versions of solid edge would, would have behaved so again that's just searching for features that look like ribs and it's maintaining the thickness let's look at a little more complex example with offset here we have these three ribs uh, radially around a boss we'll just select two of them reposition our steering wheel and do a rotate because of the coplanar relationship we don't need to pick the third rib and because of this new offset capability we only need to pick one side of the rib and we don't have to dimension that rib and back to the assembly again here we're going to change our configuration and go to the waste bin now what we've decided is that here on the front uh, this is uh, exposed to the customer and we want to put a, a nicer piece of plastic there a nicer finish but we don't want the entire waste bin to have that finish that's too expensive so we're going to create a new part and we want to show you new capabilities for transferring information from an existing part to our new part so here we are in a blank part in synchronous and we're just going to thicken we're selecting from the other part here's our wall thickness and the distance we project note that we had turned off the holes so internal features were not being projected forward we just have a, a solid piece of plastic there well we're going to add a body because we need a feature to pin this to the other part let's thicken again but this time we want the internal features only Here we project the other direction and you can now see the four pins and then the feature in the middle it's a little clearer with the other parts turned off those two parts are or bodies i should say are now union together
and we'll just push this feature back through to create the, the opening that we need there. That then leaves us with our four mounting pins on our new part. So a great feature there to help you create aesthetic parts. So synchronous technology in Solid Edge continues to improve, providing even more speed and flexibility. We saw the hybrid experience of combining history-based or ordered modeling with synchronous modeling has improved, meaning we can now make better use of both modeling methods. In fact, this was a top user request. We also saw various other modeling enhancements around multi-body, 3D sketch, mirror, design intent, and in context. In fact, there's even more great new stuff in the area of synchronous in-context modeling that we didn't see. Multiple faces can now be replaced in one go, and whole features can be created from a Boolean subtraction with a threaded shaft. For example, the bolt shown here. And not forgetting that sheet metal can be synchronous too. ST9 can create contour flanges from the edges of multiple parts. Finally, we did see the improved material library with property validation and organization improvements before it's not specific to synchronous. The improved hybrid modeling experience is definitely a hit. This is customer Kimball International, an innovative furnishings company, recognized as one of Fortune's most admired and one of Forbes' best in America. So with this particular enhancement in mind, if you haven't tried synchronous technology yet, now's the time. You can see that it's not one method or the other. It can be both, synchronous and ordered, whatever's the easiest and quickest for you. Next up, and brand new in ST9, Solid Suite. We're going to do a quick two-minute live demo. We're going to return to this middle part of the juicer for our demonstration of the Solid Suite command. And just to make sure we're clear about what we're doing here, you're probably familiar with sweeping. You take a curve and you sweep a cross-section curve through it. Well, this is a little different. We are going to sweep this construction solid through our guide curve. So it's now a three-dimensional feature that's being swept through it. And of course, this represents what would happen if you took a ball end mill and ran it along that curve. So you get a nice aesthetic look to that handle using the solid sweep. And let's finish things up here in this case by putting a little round around those sharp edges. In this case, then, we're using solid sweep to create an aesthetic feature. But of course, on the mechanical side, this feature is going to be invalu invaluable for people creating cams where they need to create the shape of a tool as it's machining the shape of the cam out. A simple example there on the Zoom X. So However, the application, of course, goes way beyond that. As I mentioned, you can create cams with solid sweep, so we can simulate machine tool operations like milling, such as a milled bit, a 3D milled path, or a milled barrel cam. Or through adding material, it can create complex protrusions. Next up is 3D printing. As I'm sure you're aware, this is an increasingly growing trend, and not only for prototype manufacturer, but also for end product manufacturer, be it a plastic part for hobby use or even 3D printed metal parts for professional use. Now, of course, Solid Edge enables us to design any part we like, but ST9 makes it easier to get it 3D printed. Let's take a look. Let's continue with that center part we've been using for our other demos. We need to add some embossing of text and symbols to the center area. This part can be removed by the customer. We need to communicate to them that they may not put this part in the dishwasher. 
We'll begin by embossing some text on and then we'll go to the symbols. At this point it's just a sketch. Now we're going to our library and this is something new in ST9. We've had blocks in the draft environment for a long time, but now blocks are available to use with sketches in part and sheet metal. So here's the, I guess, the international symbol for dishwasher. And then we're going to put a, a X through here to indicate that uh, we do not put this in the dishwasher. Okay, so now we've got all these sketch elements and Let's look at how we can quickly create an emboss feature using these multiple sketches. Everything is selected by dragging a fence. And that's the complete feature. Now you can see we've got a pull down with improved graphics for selecting different face styles. So we'll change the style of our embossed feature. So 3D printing is the latest technology in creating prototypes of new parts without having to build expensive plastic injection molds. Solid Edge ST9 sets the standard for an easy to use interface for previewing the print model before sending it to the Microsoft 3D Builder app. This preview option gives us a live look at the model that can be rotated and zoomed as well as an overall print size so we can ensure it can be printed on the 3D printer we may have access to. In the 3D Builder app, we can orient the part by virtually dropping it on the table to see how it settles best to print the part. If we don't own or have access to a 3D printer, we can even send it from the app to someone who does. The beauty here is that in a matter of hours, or worst case, a few days, we can have the prototype of the real part in our hands to see and touch. Compared to just a few years ago, this is a super fast and super economical way to test a prototype part for fit and function. And here it is shown in the Microsoft Builder app. So in summary, Solid Edge ST9 makes 3D printing a reality whether we own a 3D printer or not. To assist the process, ST9 provides a solid print preview with tolerance control and reusing logo and text designs on parts is much easier with ST9's drag and drop sketch blocks. Whether you want to remove proprietary detail or improve graphical performance, model simplification is a key. ST9 makes this even easier with enhanced model simplification. Let's take a look. Next, we'll look at another nice enhancement for removing detail in parts where it might be helpful for display performance or to hide proprietary details from competitors. Model simplification is made easy with the new ST9 enclosure command. This takes selected faces and encapsulates them with cylindrical or box features. In these first instances, we will select faces at the extremes of where we want to create the box enclosure. Selecting a plane in the command orients the box normal to the faces. On the other side of the part, let's take a look at enclosing the rectangular base 
and the pin with a cylinder. Notice that when it's set to inside cylinder, it is staying tangent to the inside faces of the rectangular area. Switching it to an outside cylinder encapsulates both the rectangular base and the pin in a cylindrical feature. Now let's look at enclosing the end cylinder with an offset to see the results of that option. An easy way to simplify a component to its most basic shape is to enclose the entire body in a box or a cylinder. As we return to the assembly, you can see that we can then display the component in its simplified form as defined by the enclosure. In summary, a selection of methods to easily simplify your parts, whether that's for the purpose of removing proprietary detail to protect intellectual property, to help your computer out for increased display performance or even so that we can make a quick calculation of stock required for manufacture. Patterning, a common method used to save time when we need to repeat, repeat details or components. ST9 makes this even more efficient. Let's take a look. First, we'll change our display configuration to focus in on the gear housing at the center of the mechanism. A new display option called Isolate helps us get focused on our design work quickly, as well as provide other options that we'll look at later. But first, let's check out some patterning enhancements. When we in-place activate it into the housing, notice we have a thread on the first bore that needs to be placed on the other bores. First, we can turn on the coordinate systems used to create those boss features. Then, we'll select the four features used to create the threads. To expedite the process of creating additional thread features, Duplicate has now been added to all part environments, making this quick and easy. Locate the From feature from first, which is the coordinate system, then the two coordinate system. Notice how quickly we can achieve the desired results. Back at the top level assembly, notice that we are still in isolate mode, but we have options to restore the components to get quickly back where we started. Now we'll focus on another area of change with patterning at the assembly level. First, we will change the display configuration to focus on a different area of the assembly. Then we'll turn on the sketches used to create the foot and plug features around these two components. Finally, we can drag and drop a foot pad from our library that serves as a multi-part purpose part, a foot pad, and also a plug. Duplicate component at the assembly level has also been enhanced to utilize coordinate systems and block sketches that reside inside of part components. Here we are simply using the same sketches used to create these features at the part level to duplicate our foot pads around both of these parts in the assembly. Notice that the sketches are on all sides of this part so we are not limited to a single sketch. Finally, let's make a change to the location of one of these cutouts at the part level by simply changing a dimension value. 
realizing this hole is too close to the edge, we will change its value to 90 millimeters. After the change, we can go back to the top level assembly and see the pad update as we would expect. In summary, the power of the duplicate tool has grown beyond patterning and parts and assemblies. We can now pattern faces, features, and bodies using coordinate systems, blocks, and sketch-driven patterns. And of course, the beauty of duplicate is that we're not limited to a single plane. So just to reinforce the example that we saw, that means that component location in an assembly can automatically match feature location in a part. Excellent. But another great application is for plant layout, a machine located at the correct orientation wherever a sketch block or a coordinate system is. Finally, don't forget the new isolate view tool added. It's great when working with specific components in an assembly. And it's often the little things in life that make the difference. Here, customer bird technologies who pride themselves on designing the world's most reliable radio frequency products, loving the new Isolate display tool. Next up, to make your assemb assembly work even more productive, ST9 brings enhanced assembly management. Let's take a look. ST9 now provides our customers with a way to add non-graphic data to assembly occurrences. This data, such as notes, assembly instructions, reference ID designators, and even maintenance procedures, can be used for downstream use or integration with external systems like MRP. To demonstrate this capability, notice the pads on the bottom of the base part. Even though the foot pad is the same occurrence in all its locations, it's being used for different purposes in this assembly. Some are foot pads, some are foot plugs, and others are just plugs. New in ST9 is the ability to read user-defined custom properties into the occurrence properties of an assembly. In this case, we are adding reference ID, type, and notes. Once these properties have been read in, information can easily be added for each of these properties. What is powerful here is that each of these same occurrences can have a unique identifier, such as a reference ID number. In addition, because each of the foot pads has a slightly different use, the type property can be uniquely identified for each pad as well. Here we're just changing some of the reference IDs. And here we're changing the type identifier. Remember, these are all the same part. We're adding unique information for each occurrence. Finally, if any information for assembly purposes needs to be added, the notes field provides a place to add that type of information. Remember, these can be customized by the user. Additionally, we can create and save queries on these custom properties within the assembly. This provides a way for us to search and locate specific components within an assembly. Notice the option to select any of the custom properties that were read into the assembly. Here we will use type. Once the query is set up, a simple double click and those components are quickly located. You see them highlighted in green on the bottom of the assembly. We mentioned downstream processes. So let's take a look or let's take this into the draft environment to better understand how these added properties can be used. For this example, we've saved this view, which we will use to place in draft. Once in draft, we can click, quickly select that display configuration and saved views before placing the view on the sheet. In this case, we'll use a shaded view representation.
Next, let's place a parts list that includes these custom properties and their occurrence specific information. Notice after placement that the parts list shows all six occurrences, but each occurrence has its own reference ID and type associated to it. Also, notice the notes were extracted for assembly information. It's some powerful capabilities that were added to ST9. Another area of focus for assembly was around assembly relationships. For this, we'll open the motor assembly to demonstrate these enhancements. We had shown you the new display command called isolate earlier, but a second display option was added in this release called toggle display. This command does exactly what it says. It simply allows us to visually add or remove one or more components from the graphics view. So here we're just selecting them and then they're removed from the display. Added in ST9 is the capability to control all the relationships of an entire assembly through a single dialog that you see here on the right. Through Relationship Manager, we can group relationships by type, component, or status. It gives us different ways to sort the relationships. Also provided is an option to filter the relationships by showing only what we want to see. For example, let's just look at only relationships with missing geometry. The second button gives us the option to update all the relationships in the assembly, and the third button allows us to repair relationships. In this case, we will choose to suppress these three relationships that have missing geometry. At any time, we can choose to fix these relationships, though. For example, let's unsuppress the last relationship. The interface gives us the option to rename the variable, so we will call this bearing offset. All relationships provide tooltips showing their current status. In addition, you can double click on any of the parts to in place edit the part. If we double click on a relationship, Solid Edge will put us in Relationship Editor where we can quickly fix the problem. All this is built into Relationship Manager giving us full con control of our assembly relationships. Those are some nice assembly management tools. First, we saw the ability to assign unique properties to part occurrences and for them to be pulled out in a drawing. Great for notes, assembly instructions, reference IDs, maintenance procedures. We also saw the brand new Relationships Manager, not just for reviewing everything in one place, but also for managing relationships, fixing any issues, or simply making edits. And finally, another great new assembly display tool, Toggle Display, to intuitively hide and show components on the fly. Next up, enhancements to the variable table, a central control for all parameters in the model. Another area that Solid Edge ST9 has enhanced is the assembly variable table which is a tool that gives us the ability to control all the model parameters in a single location. To demonstrate these enhancements, let's focus on the base component of the ZoomX Soul. We can get there quickly using a saved display configuration and then turn off a couple of components we don't need. We can use the peer variables command to view specific part variables within this assembly. So we will use the base part. Once up, we notice the variable table has some new options across the top. The first button is list view, which is we will look at in a minute, but right next to it is structured view, providing us with the feature listing in the part we are looking at. From this view, we can easily find any feature we want to modify, such as the holes in the back of our part. For example, we can increase the large cutout diameter to 30 millimeters and then update the part to reflect this change. If we want the small cutout to drive the large cutout, we can quickly input a formula to achieve this. For example, we may always want the large cutout to be 10 millimeters larger than the small cutout. 
then when we make a change to the small cutout, they both update to their new size. From a different area on the part where the foot pads were placed, we notice the pads on the corners are set to a specific angle. Because they are all in relationship with a master, the angle of all four pads will change at the same time. Here we first set it to 90 degrees, but if that is not the desired position, then it can easily be changed to a different position. The list view button gives us the default view that the previous versions of the variable table gave us, but in ST9, custom sorting for this view has been added. For example, we can now add multiple sorting fields. In this example, we'll sort first by name, then by type. This provides us with a fast way to locate the variables we are looking for. Enhancements have been added to provide more functions such as pi, which was a large customer request, but also if-then-else logic. For example, notice the logic function set up for foot distance. If the distance between the feet is greater than 230 millimeters, then another supporting foot is added. So let's change the value to 250 to see how this works. These enhancements to the variable table give SolidEdge users better control of their designs. Of course, since we've added a new fit location to the bottom of the base part, we need to add a pad to that location. To do this, we can easily edit the duplicate pattern to get this done fast and easy. So the already powerful variable table is even more powerful in ST9. More functions have been added such as logic, if then else, like we saw in the demonstration, but also inverse trigonometry, conversion, for example, converting radians to degrees. The rule editor also has more capability for things like setting limits. All in all, this enables even greater modeling intelligence and design automation. But it's not, all, it's not all about added power. Ease of use has been improved too. The variable table now has structured grouping consistent with the Pathfinder and Excel-like multi-column sorting, making it easier to find a variable. We've got some new features to reduce costly mistakes in sheet metal with clash detection. Now I'm not going to do a demo of this because I think once you see the command it's going to be pretty straightforward. When we speak of a clash in sheet metal, we're talking about the situation where when you unfold your part, sometimes the flanges come down and actually run into each other, indicating that you've created a part that actually can't be made via a single flat pattern. So that's a clash. Now in ST9, if that situation exists in the flat pattern, you will see the gray arrow here in your flat pattern step, indicating that you have a clash that needs to be fixed. You can use the geometry inspector for further study. Drawings are still king in the design world and Solid Edge is still the king of drawings. Let's see what ST9 adds in this area. As within past releases of Solid Edge Draft, we continue to add best-in-class functionality into the drafting environment. This year is no different, and again, we raise the bar and listen to users' needs. Being able to precisely place a break on drawing view is important. With ST9, the ability to key point snap to any location is quick and easy to do. If the model ever changes, and there is no need to worry about the drawing view being out of date, it will update because of the key point lo location. Let's see how this works. 
Notice how when we place our cursor over something like this arc on the keyway, the arc center point is available. Here we will snap to both centers and select the finish to add the break. Now we'll make a change to the model. We place our break in the centers of the keyway, so let's shorten the keyway by 20 millimeters for this change. A simple fence select is all we have to do to shorten the length of the keyway. Notice here in the drawing view tracker, the original length was 61 millimeters, and now it's shorter. The brakes have followed the keyway centers and updated on the view. Look at all these hidden lines on this drawing. With ST9, we can control select as many views as we like, then go into the properties to turn off the display of all the hidden lines in the selected views very fast. Making changes to the view orientation after view placement is very easy in ST9. We can select any drawing view, go to either the drawing view layout command or the view orientations command and simply pick another view orientation and all views will update based on their projection. This is true with all major views. Now let's switch to this next tab and look at some cool things inside dimensions. New to the symmetric diameter command is the ability to alternate text position and group the dimensions together just like we do with the C diameter command. Notice as we place these dimensions, the software automatically alternates the location of each dimension. If we delete these ANSI dimensions and then go back into the symmetric diameter command, but this time we will place these dimensions as ISO, you will notice you have the same alternating of dimensions, plus we are now underlining the symbol and or prefix. If we take a look at the style of the ISO dimension, the alternating option is located here under the lines and coordinate tab. The final thing we will look at is a new table type called tolerance tables. Notice here in the drawing we have several dimensions with fit class tolerancing. Each of these letter class fits has standardized tolerancing for each dimensional fit. Not really knowing the tolerance for each of these dimensions, we would like, we have to go and grab our machinist handbook to check the correct tolerance of each fit on our drawing. The tolerance table command will populate all these standard tolerances for each fit classification for us. If we look here in the tables group, this is where you'll find the tolerance table command. We have three different options for how Solid Edge will select all of the fit class dimensions by active sheet, by drawing view, or by user select. We will use by active sheet. Notice here in the properties of the table, the configurable power we have come to expect from other Solid Edge tables is available here too. Under the columns tab, you'll, you can see the properties to use in the display of your table. We will take all the defaults and place our table. The interface for print preview has also been distinguished from solid 3D printing, now called paper print. Here we can enjoy a larger preview area for zooming and panning around any sheet. In summary, these were a few of the great drafting enhancements available in Solid Edge ST9, ensuring your drawing productivity. So what did we see? Improved section and broken view capability, including better model associativity, quicker view modification with the freedom to change view orientations after placement, and have all associative views update accordingly, plus the ability to modify multiple view styles at once. Improved readability for symmetric dimensions, the awesome new tolerance table, so you won't have to reference that engineering handbook so much now, and improved paper print preview as opposed to solid 3D print. A couple of items not shown in the demonstration. Draft items can now be stored in an external file for ease of multi-machine administration. This was a top 10 user request. And finally, multi-core processing for drawing view updates. 
where initial studies have shown a 28% time saving. Remember, that was only a selection of what's new in SD9 modeling capabilities. Here are some other great modeling enhancements. Spiral curve, drag and drop appearances at the assembly level with improved preview, piping usability enhancements, and the ability to reorient sheet metal flat patterns for accurate costing, to name a few. Ever important in assisting design work, simulation has also been enhanced in ST9. Meshing performance has improved with initial studies showing a 4x time saving. Boundary conditions can now be suppressed for easier what-if scenarios. And there's now an option to maximize quad elements over tri elements for improved surface meshing. The other leading manufacturing CAM solution for Solid Edge, CAM Express, has also been improved in the latest 10 release. In process workpiece can be generated in the background, allowing other projects to be worked on while it calculates. The graphical toolpath editor has been improved in relinking toolpaths that have had a portion cut away. Corner smoothing for Z level and flow cut operations has been improved for better surface finishes. Automatic cut pattern direction for follow periphery means the path will automatically switch from inward to outward and vice versa, depending on which option does a better job for that cut level. <clears throat> Finally, new milling operations including boss milling and thread milling for boss allow milling and threading of bosses just like with holes. Next step, scalable data management. How do you like the sound of instantaneous searches easy revisions and release management, an optional cloud-based vaulting for all levels of solid edge, design and drafting, foundation, classic, and premium. ST9 delivers just that, built-in data management. Today we will be looking at the new solid edge built-in data management functionality. With a growing need for file management within a large portion of our customer base, SolidEdge now offers some great out-of-the-box tools to help properly manage data. With new features such as unique document numbers, revisions, lifecycle management, and newly enhanced quick search, finding and saving your parts has never been easier. We'll start with our ZoomX Juicer product. Enhanced searching within Windows Explorer allows for customized search criteria, allowing us to know exactly what's available without ever having to open a part or assembly. Seeing as we have some changes to make on our main assembly, we can simply search for the title, check the preview to ensure it's the correct one, and send it over to Design Manager for a more in-depth look. Inside of Design Manager, users can see all file properties, make changes such as revisions, set solid edge status, rename files, even send files to other users. Since Design Manager is directly integrated with Solid Edge, opening our assembly is as easy as clicking a button. We have received feedback from our design review that we need to change a tap plug that has been reported to be restricting flow, as well as fix a clearance issue on our pump housing. Let's start by taking a closer look at our tap plug. We see that this plug is blocking flow and doesn't quite fit in our tap support. Seeing as this is a vendor supplied part, let's check our vendor folder and see if we can find a replacement that we can reuse, cutting down on design rework. Using enhanced searching within Solid Edge, we can easily set our search path to find all components that our vendor, Crate and Brothers, have created. Having access to custom properties for searches makes finding the correct components a breeze. However, rather than go through all these files, we'll simply use the tools available to further narrow down our search results. So let's add another property to the search. Since the original part is called a plug, let's add that to our search. 
Search Narrow, now we can select the individual results to get a preview of what the component looks like, just like the results from Windows Explorer. Since we have a specific size we're looking for, we see none of these existing parts will work. We'll need to redesign the plug to fit our assembly. Solid Edge looks after our naming conventions for all new files created. And performing a replace part with a copy is no different. Our dialog allows us to type in a document number and automatically populates the file name along with any unique part properties desired. Additionally, keeping the naming convention consistent will give our part an appropriate new title to reflect the size. Selecting Save replaces the previous component with our newly created part inside the assembly, but it appears as though this part number is already being used. Enforcing unique document numbers with built-in data management keeps us from duplicating file names that could cause problems later. Let's change the document number to make it unique. Now that we have our new part, we can simply use a synchronous change to edit the diameter. Part complete and our first issue is resolved. Our final change is to fix a clearance issue on our mail drum. By taking a look at the sump assembly, we can see there is a gap that needs to be smaller. Easy fix for synchronous technology. Simply selecting the face we want to edit and dragging it out. Wait, wait, the solid edge is giving us a warning message letting us know that the parts we're editing is released. Therefore, read only. Since we can't edit it, we'll need to make a revision. First, seeing as this component is released, we need to be aware of what other assemblies or locations where this file might be used. Using the where use command allows us to search all other documents that have a link to the part we're needing to change. We can see from the returned results that the only other place the part is used is in the associated drawing. Now to perform the revision, when revising from A to B, then all we have to do is click Save. The best part, the related draft file will automatically be revised with the part as well. Now we are in a working state with revision B and we can fix our clearance issue on the sump assembly. Now that all of our changes are complete, we need to send our finished assembly to the customer. A great new enhancement in Solid Edge is the new pack and go capability. This command allows us to bundle our assembly and send it direct to any user. Clicking on pack and go from our assembly, we can set options to include drawings or simulation documents, maintain folder structure or zip the file, as well as view the documents in a list or structured view. Using this tool is a simple way to transfer data and maintain all associated relationships and links while doing so. For collaboration on a project, we can use cloud-based services such as Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, OneDrive, or whatever your preference is to share. Here we are using Dropbox to share this assembly data with a customer. But what about working internally with other team members, perhaps in a different country? Of course, we can simply move our entire project to our Dropbox team folder, but what's more, Solid Edge integrates with Dropbox and adds a locking mechanism to ensure that the active user maintains ownership while making changes. As you can see, with the enhancements with built-in data management, our data is very easily managed. Integration with Solid Edge allows us to manage our data directly, making our design process much faster and much more robust. So lots of data management capability out of the box with Solid Edge ST9, and most importantly of all, with no need for additional IT resources, no SQL, no databases, finding files is fast and easy. What better tool to integrate with than Windows Explorer, something every Microsoft user knows? 
and the where use capability another great searching tool to measure impact of any changes. To ensure an organized system, there's protection against duplicate file names and a document number generator available. Revisions are taken care of with minimal clicks, looking after associated drawings along the way. We saw the design manager utility that looks after, amongst other things, revision and release management. And also a simple pack and go tool that does exactly what the button says to quickly gather associated data to send to suppliers or customers. The design manager utility is getting great reception from our customers. Here, Matt Johnson from PAC Worldwide, a global leader in the manufacturing of protective packaging for companies such as Unique Cosmetics, talking about the valuable release management that it provides. Finally, the ability to collaborate seamlessly with several sites is enabled using popular cloud storage services such as Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, Box. This will, of course, synchronize changes from one site to another, but Solid Edge integration can lock files at other sites during edits to ensure correct ownership. Another great use for this is off-site data backup. And finally, if the preference is not to go cloud, that's fine. This will all work with existing local and network infrastructure also. Used in conjunction with other existing tools, such as view and markup for noting required changes, and the mobile viewers for mobile viewing, ST9's built-in data management provides a lot of value. But if or when your data management needs grow, your data will be in an organized state to grow into pro full product lifecycle management, or PLM. This is where Team Center steps in the industry standard in PLM, and ST9 brings best-in-class integration to it. We won't take the time to live demo it today, but if this interests you, please contact us at Acuity, and we'll be happy to schedule another demo for you. This is a review of what you would see in a Team Center demo with the integration with Solid Edge ST9. We'll start with Active Workspace. This is all about streamlined access to product and process data. This innovative interface is now embedded directly in Solid Edge. There's now a dedicated ribbon collecting all Team Center tools together for quicker everyday tasks. And there's better visibility of Team Center session information and an enhanced check-in interface. And that's not all. Improved visibility of standard and custom properties in dialogues and full access to Team Center properties and mapping to Solid Edge. Multiple revisions of the same part in a design session can now be opened. Great for making comparisons and new workflows can be initiated directly from Solid Edge. And still more. The cache assistant has been improved for managing local cache with a new create package capability for improved external collaboration along with various other performance enhancements. If you're thinking that your company already requires this level of data management, ask about Team Center Rapid Start today. This is full Team Center, but pre-configured, all about speed of deployment and cost effectiveness, and we can take care of all of this for you here at Acuity. So that's Solid Edge ST9. It's cloud-enabled design, but on your terms. Continued development for fast and flexible 3D modeling. So make sure you benefit from all these great things by scheduling update training today. If you think you're up to it, why not have a go at becoming a Solid Edge certified professional? Ask us at Acuity and we'll help you with that. Thank you today for your time.